Hello, everyone. Uh, just checking the audio is coming through online. I'll be starting in a sec. Just come through now. There we go. Um, okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in tonight for the fourth international poetry event. Um, there's a few people saying hello in the YouTube chat. Um, we've got people reading tonight from uh, India, Nigeria, USA, and the UK. These events have been a wonderful way of uh, seeing the positives that happen through online events and the positives of what are available. Um, this is a part of Assembly Online. If you haven't seen it before, Assembly Online is a, a regular free program of visual arts, poetry, film, and performance every two weeks, live on YouTube. Um, if you're not on the mailing list, I'll post a link in the YouTube chat and you can join on there. Um, this event has been selected by Kai Draper, who I'm sure a lot of you will know. Kai is from South London, but based in Norwich. Um, he probably won't give himself an introduction, and if you've tuned in before, you might have heard me say this already, but it's probably worth saying again, that his work appears in forthcoming publications from Lighthouse Journal, Bad Betty Press, Leslie Magazine, La Magoya, and others. Um, before lockdown, he had also been hosting free poetry workshops at the Book Hive. Um, I hope those will be continuing. I don't know when. He might be able to fill you in. Um, I'll be back at the end to, to have, talk a little bit more about what we have coming up. Um, an event programmed up till the end of November before it goes on to the that, that word no one's mentioning yet. Um, and then plans for next year will be out soon. Um, I'm now going to give you a smooth transition to Kai and stop my own mic. Am I up? Oh, right. Oh, <laughs> I just see the words Henry Jackson in big. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, very nice to be here tonight. Have you all with us? Um, thanks for joining. I can see Mum and Jules are here, and I know that uh, they're hopefully also with Sean and the baby. I love having Sean and the baby here. That's my sis and my niece, uh, who is maybe at her like second, third or fourth poetry reading, aged like less than three months old. Is that four months old? Less than four months old. Um, anyway, yeah, welcome. Here we are. Um, the YouTube chat is very, very good for us because it's the way, it's kind of the only way we're getting feedback right now. Um, so please say hi. Uh, please tell us where you're coming from. Please tell us how you're feeling. Please tell us uh, in general what's good. Um, thanks to all the readers tonight. We've got a cracking lineup. It's really, it's a special one. Um, Super happy and excited for all of this. The, the order will be, I'm going to read some poems um, and then we're going to have Zara up first. Then we're going to have Adedeo. Then we're going to have Sebastian. Finally, we'll have Maria. I'll do a little thing at the end. Henry will wrap it up and that's it. We're, it you normally lasts about an hour. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoy it. I'm going to start with a poem by um, Ben Johnson, who was a contemporary of Shakespeare. Uh, so we're talking sort of 400 years ago now. And I'm going to read this very short rhyming poem. Well, all of those poems rhyme back then. But um, I'm going to read this poem. It's called On Spies. And I'm reading this because the UK has just enshrined into law uh, an order which means that people working for 
the secret services, so MI5 and MI6, and potentially more insidiously, the police are able to break the law with impunity. Now, whatever you think of James Bond, I think one group of people which is allowed to get away with anything and everyone else is not, is a pretty fucking, I'm sorry. My mum told me not to swear so much <laughs> on these things. But you know what? I think that's a pretty dodgy situation. This is a real short poem. This is called On Spies uh, by Ben Johnson, written about 400 years ago. On Spies. Spies, you are lights in state, but of base stuff. Who, when you've burnt yourselves down to the snuff, stink and are thrown away and fair enough. There you go. That's Ben's poem from back in the day. Right. Uh, I also want to read a really quick poem uh, that I'm going to dedicate to Maria up in Scotland. Uh, I, I did a sick camping trip in Scotland. The midges were fucked up. This poem is called Midges. Midges in the eyes. No, the way I start again. Midges in the ears, midges in the eyes. Midges on the breath, midges on the rise. Midges in the pan, midges in the dish. Crossing midgy fingers, making midgy wish. Midges in the pen, midges on the page. Midges laughing, midges grin. Midge all in a rage. Midges in the charcoal, midges in the ice. Midge apart. Midge a whole, once midge, twice. Cool. Ah, and I've just seen Maria saying, with my delay, that Sam Walton has a good poem about midges, which I'd love to read. Um, I'm now going to read a poem from Ben Hadfield's uh, book, Nigh no place. Um, I'm reading this for two reasons. One is it rhymes, and if you couldn't tell, I love rhyme. I'm a bit of a sucker for it. Um, I think rhyme is the parlance of the city. I'm a true believer. Um, and also, Jen's book won the T.S. Eliot Prize 12 years ago. Um, and the T.S. Eliot shortlist has just been released today. So that was a sort of quite tenuous connection. But anyway. Oh, the other connection is this poem is called Still Life with Long Johns. And I've just in the last few days restarted wearing my Long Johns because it's freaking cold. Um, and I'm slightly concerned about my heating bills just because my life now is staring at a laptop in my home and like that doesn't create any internal heat so I'm sticking my heating on and I'm wondering if my work are going to pay for it anyway this is called still life with long johns since the long johns were like bread pudding soggy bottomed and buttoned with fake mother of pearl since i wore them on the porch in the arid milky morning clutching my coffee and looking from tight cuffs to baggy middle like a manatee this bad land's light is like the underwear you gave me pilled and balding porridge white so that's jen hadfield's poem 
still life with long johns from nigh on no place which is a really really excellent book of poetry um and i just want to read one more poem that is a really early poem of Allen Ginsberg's. I never knew uh, that Allen Ginsberg wrote this kind of poetry, but this is early. This is from 1948. My phone's popping off a little bit. I just want to check it because I'm worried that. Oh, there we go. OK, yeah, it's fam. It's OK, they're there. They just can't access the chat. That's OK. I got a little pic of the babe. Oh my God. Listen, when there's new babes in town, it's hard to concentrate on anything else. Um, hey, Orla. So this is the first of two sonnets by Allen Ginsberg. I dwelled in hell on earth to write this rhyme. I live in stillness now in living flame. I witness heaven in unholy time. I room in the renowned city, am unknown. The flame I dwell in is not mine. I would not have it. Angels in the air serenade my senses in delight. Intelligence of poets, saints and fair, Characters converse with me all night. But all the streets are burning everywhere. The city is burning these multitudes that climb her buildings. Their inferno is the same. I scaled as a stupendous blazing stare. They vanish as I look into the light. Mags, Auntie Mags, I know I said I was going to read a poem of your friend and excellent poet, Charles. Um, I'm not going to have time. They were good poems. I'll read them at the next one, I promise. I'm now going to hand over to Zara, but before I do that, I'll read her bio. Fatima Zara is an Indian poet based in Essex. She is a Barbican young poet and a Roundhouse Poetry Collective alumna. Her work has been published or are for forthcoming in SLAM. You're gonna wanna hear this. The Ultimate APM Anthology and Tentacular Magazine. Um, Zara and I were in the last issue of Tentacular alongside each other. We've met, uh, well, the last time we met was at Verve Poetry Festival in Birmingham, um, which was excellent. I'm very, very stoked she's here. I'm going to ask to unmute and hopefully it will be real smooth. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Zara. Okay, I'm going to spotlight you. All right, brilliant. Um, hi, Ver feels like so long ago, by the way, now that you just mentioned it. Um, I've kind of been stuck in my writing this pandemic and something I do every time I feel, you know, um, every time I'm in the rut is I try and find these writing challenges floating about on the internet and try and stick to one for about 21 days or 30 days, however long it takes to form a habit. Um, and something I've been trying to do this pandemic is to try and write an ode to something small that seems insignificant. It was a writing challenge on the Young Poets Network and it was the hardest thing to do to find something small every single day um, that brings me joy. Um, you know, despite everything that's going on, especially with everything that's going on. So I thought I'd read you some odes that I wrote during that time and some poems that are odes uh, to people and places in my life. So yeah. This first one's called An Ode to the Abaya. 
Even the one I had when I was six, with white satin at the sleeves, along with the mini prayer mat my parents bought when I whined about feeling left out. Praise to the patterns on my mum's abaya I'd memorized. Held the sleeves off as we weaved through weekend crowds at shopping malls. Even then, I'd wander for a second and tug at someone else's until they noticed the top of my head. My little hand, or my mum's sheet white face, all eyes, yelling my name across the aisles. Praise to the invisibility cloak. The Spider-Man pajamas it covers in grace as I nip out to the supermarket or pick up my sister from the bus stop. Praise to the first summer of learning to be all girl under the weight of it. How easily I'd stuffed it into trash bags that spring we left. With it, my name, how it's pronounced in Arabic. My quivering lips, all swapped for books in that final suitcase. This next poem is called Sargam. It's one letter away from meaning heaven in Malayalam. And Sargam was also the name of the community events held by the expats um, where I was growing up in Jeddah. Sargam. I miss here my friends say she went to heaven for the weekend. How they danced all night. How there were string lights everywhere. How her parents lost their frowns in the crowd. I asked her why she left. I was six. God knows I don't still picture Jannah the way I did. How the class prefect tries her best sermon pitch, asks, you know Albaik, you get those in heaven. I've downsized my dua since. They exchange outfits at the gates of heaven. Asks about a boy. Asks about a dead grandfather. Of all the heavens I've hoarded, I like the one with the flying boxes of fried chicken best. The one where the bouncers speak Arabic. The one where I don't need the right passport to stay. And speaking of things I miss, um, one of the things I've missed since moving from Saudi and India is spending Ramadan um, surrounded by other families and breaking our fast together or going to each other's houses. So this is a poem I wrote, um, almost an ode to Ramadan last year. We stalk the moon all month round lick our lips till the azan goes off on our phones, dig our teeth into the soft flesh of dates, wash it down with ruhafsa, rinse and repeat. The scholars pace their eyes to the sky. The crowds trade their eyeballs for telescopes, watch the moon turn bashful, wait for henna stains to appear, a gunshot signal to pull our smiles out of the closet, strutting in their best Eid clothes. This next poem is a Mahendi ode. Oh, first teacher of patience, the slow drip of each second as I fidged in my seat, Eyes on my palms, waiting for the cool brown of the mehendi to turn dry. Oh, Muslim tattoo. Oh, human etch a sketch. How everyone asks of it at Eidga. Who drew it? Which cone? How long? Each family holds their own secrets to making it turn darker. Olive oil and cotton pads lemon juice and sugar dabbed on after it dries. 
all long hours of cousins hunched over me, replicating designs from yellowed pages of books. They spin an R into flowers and leaves on my restless hands, their brows furrowing as the cone clogs and sputters. Last night, I drew it on again, craving the laughter of other women in the room feeding each other geese sweets as we wait the long wait. Secrets slipped into each other's palms. Open. I think along with the sense of community and celebrations, um, something I've been missing is seeing family quite often and this almost feels counterintuitive but this is a poem um, for something I didn't miss as much maybe during the pandemic. An ode to the auntie who dissects my silence for dinner. How she calls my name in prayer. Thanks God her daughter didn't turn out like me. Tell me how your daughter circled to the moon thrice. How she built her own spaceship from your neighbor's fiat. How she taught herself to cook up a sadhya and never talks back. How your wagging tongue drags me to a stone hinge of my failures. Beats me up for all the wrong yearnings. I turn these legends of daughters into perfect pills. Take three for lunch, still wake up the same. I run away and my name slips from your conversations. No one bends to pick it up. I kicked up a beehive today. Sounded just like you. This next poem is for my youngest sister. She's 11 and my biggest critique. She's read almost all the poems I've written um, and always has something to say about them. For Zeba. The first time we met, I'd skipped school to be there. Rocking back and forth in the fluorescent light, swayed by the smell of antiseptics and rear of machines waking up. We wait for you. Held by the hypnotic tape of four cells blooming into a baby, we fix our eyes to the only screen that didn't wear a frown. When the nurse brings you out in your brown striped pajamas, Upa rubs a date in your cheek and whispers the azan. We watch your fingers like carrots sticking out the blanket and claim our features in your face. You spend the rest of your life proving to be a different brand of brilliant we never saw coming. This next poem is for the London Aquatic Center, Stratford, or my memories at that place. Um, my campus was like two stops away from this place. And some days when I had classes and early, I just nip over, go for a swim. And it was the best thing. And I can't imagine doing that anytime soon. London Aquatic Center, Stratford. The first time you wear a bikini in public, its ladies are at the local pool. Your mother's disapproving brows follow you. The changing room is filled with middle school girls' staccato laughter and your skin winces with no place to hide. You twist and turn in front of the mirror, wishing you could be reduced to a sliver of light. You picture knives caressing your hips. 
You walk down the hall to a symphony of rapid Bengali and school kids' afternoon laughter. You breathe it all in and jump. In the water, you could be rainbow fish or electric eel. This last poem that I wrote, hang on. Um, this one's inspired by Lucille Clifton. And it's an ode to my thighs. If we could pick out thighs like Christmas trees from the Sunday market, you wouldn't be my first choice. You stretcher of size eight pants, you pear straight criminal. Oh, thick tendrils, you not even cute thighs. When the boy in the book I'm reading gets run over by a car and he wakes up holding on to his legs or what's left of it, I feel each screw drilled in and the searing pain. At night, my hands slide under the covers to see you haven't left me. I am a terrible owner, I'll admit. I don't let you swim as often or mow in a dress the way people do in movies. Oh, map for a lover's fingers. Pay no attention to the mirror curses I send your way or the voices of middle school girls' laughter. They didn't know love like this. Thank you. Flower. Thank you so much. That was so sick. <laughs> oh. That was so beautiful. That last poem especially I thought was really, really, yeah. Thank you. There were so many good lines in that. I mean, obviously, all the poems are amazing, but I think someone put in the chat also the line about watch the moon turn bashful. And that is, you know, the moon is a big thing. <laughs> and that's a really, that's a unique line. Amazing. Anyway, I won't try and say too much. Um, thank you very much for sharing your poems with us tonight. Okay, next up, we have Adedeo Agarao, whose chat book, Origin of Names, was selected by Chris Abani and Kwame Dawes for New Generation African Poet African Poetry Book Fund 2020. He is a human nutritionist, documentary photographer, and author of two chapbooks for Boys Who Went and The Arrival of Rain. I've got The Arrival of Rain, Rain. good book. Get your hands on that. Adadeo was shortlisted for the uh, Babishai uh, Niwe Poetry Prize in 2018, runner up of the Savage. Uh, Poetry Prize 2019. He is an editor at Iceflow Press, assistant editor at Animal Heart Press, contributing editor for Poetry at Baron Magazine, and a poetry reader at Feral. All excellent journals and presses. His works have appeared or are forthcoming in Agowo, Glass Poetry, Mineral Lit, Iceflow, Ghost City, Thames, Linden Avenue, Headway Lit, the Shore Poetry, Yellow, and elsewhere. Adedeo was said to have curated and edited the biggest poetry anthology by Nigerian poets 
Memento, an, an anthology of contemporary Nigerian poetry, another book that is sitting on my shelf, which is a stunner. And if you like poetry anthologies, really, really, I can't recommend that anthology enough. Um, you can find him on Twitter at Adedeo underscore Agarao or agaraoadedeo.com. Um, he's also a very lovely person. I'm going to do the technology thing. Hopefully it's going to work. Here he is. <clears throat> yes, mate. Whoa. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Good evening. So I I was just saying on YouTube that Kai is actually a very dramatic person. I mean, <laughs> I, was, I was laughing as, as he was reading my shit by So, so, so pleasant to be with every one of you. And um, <sighs> okay, so um, I am going to like start by reading a poem from my chat book, The Arrival of Rain. And the poem would, in, in a way, sort to um, address the issue that we're having in Nigeria at the moment. We, we are actually ex ex experiencing or, or going through um, police brutality. And, you know, it's actually very devastating. So, so I'm going to like start by reading the poem about Somebody's story, someone who died by gunshots by policemen. So the title of this one is What It Means to Be Freed by, for What It Means to Be Freed by Your Country. For Daniel Usman. Daniel 19 opens his head for a dozen bullets. The bulletin says his body is a prize. A man shows the president his prey. A man takes the street into his mouth, turns the rose into a coin. The boy's head becomes a headline. Democracy ties a knot with silence. The sun sinks beneath the tongue. The moon wedges itself behind the clouds. The boy will someday rise into a revolution. Men revolting against a country that asks for heads instead of thumbs, blood instead of nods. This is my country. A jungle of men breaking out of the night. Somewhere in Lagos, a man says the only way to power is showing what you have killed. Says in this country, the body is nothing but a count. A score. Another boy falls back into his father's arms, dead in Ibadan. His mother boils with fury. A field of revenge rises in her eyes. This is how we cast our innocence in the ballot of anguish. Our beds burn the tiny in the sky. My country is ocean's exit wounds. And to be free means to be caged in a coffin, to ride home as a boy, night in with trumpets and despair, thinking this, my country, a city under siege, served my father a plate of my dead body. Thank you. Um, so I'll go on to reading. Uh, okay, the title of this one is, On the Day of Reckoning, I was in a drowning room listening to music. There is something in music that sets the room ablaze. The echoes aching. The resonance reaching for distance. Cities planted in my body. I begin a poem by singing along. The room bleak with every drowning particle. Let us agree that Elijah built an ark and Moses served the Lord. That music is nothing but the revolution of memories. I am in my grandmother's dress, and I dream about starting a fire here. Make a bind banana leaves 
everything I dream about is the aching of a squirrel or Elijah's brain with an empty throat. This hunger is asking for blood. The Lord's prayer read from the plea for forgiveness. I bless this tripartite God. When the spirit left her body, it fell into a coffin. When it fell into a coffin, she became wind to me. She wound the sea into my hands. My hands, the gatherer of pictures. I must admit that I, too, wound a mist into my fallen mouth. On, on a in, into grief, the ballad into elegy. The poem, this song becomes a sour on the tongue. This drowning bears the cross of this this drowning bears the cross the savior for soup. I carry a lineage in my head. Every dark city in my prayer is God's unwanted window, even my body. This poem is largely built on hope. The one thing to sink a bullet into a head or the solidarity with water. When the song became a storm, when when the song became a storm, Christ was dozing on this sheet, his head falling off the line along my shoulder. When the storm became the gallows, my depression shrieked. The soldiers whistled the storm into a mannequin. Nothing would be said, said of the grandchild who dies from searching for its ancestor. But love, but compassion, everyone has a waiting room, and for me, it is a poem. It is my own voice standing down before my will. I am revisiting memories of thunderstorms. Maybe I will learn to clap at my own incompetence. Maybe light will spring across the forest of this solitude rising in the north of this body. Everyone has a waiting room, and mine has a grave in it. My grandmother shaking off dust from her bones on this day of reckoning. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, this, this next poem um, is something that I am still experimenting about. I'm still experimenting with rather. I titled it The Book of Cain. One, at what point does silence become surrender? The diligence of beds, the songs they make too. I whimper like a storm and call it a song. Is that you, O oh Lord, rustling leaves in my cleanless fire? Three, Lord. Do you mean sacrifice is not sacrifice? It's not sacrifice if there are no killings. If Father does not lay his son over a platform, shooting his throat with a knife, his blood shouting glory, glory for I have seen the Lord. If anguish is burning rams, does not ram incenses into your nose of bronze. For this is envy. This is my blood building a boat. Five, in your raging voice. Six, my brother's eyes staring from the other side. Seven, I want to be in your place. Be the neck twisted until silence becomes an arrival. Until I am standing beneath a sky spray. When the Lord rejects you, what do you do? What do you turn to? My body tells me this is violence. The way a generation is smeared, at, uh, is smeared out at once. The way a fleet of horses becomes eight, a speck of dust. I carry my bag and leave the dead orange in this house. Do you hear the sea? Do you hear when the sea cries? For once, Abel's blood says, sorry, sorry, sorry. Thank you. Um, I, I, I'm actually trying to <laughs> calm down because I feel so anxious, and then I'm using this opportunity to shout out to my girlfriend who's here with us, or she's here with me. <laughs> um, this next poem is titled "Selective Amnesia with My Grandmother's Call." I've been patient with memory. If you are quiet enough, you will hear the distress inside the body, a baby's babbling. The cold heart yearns for warmth. I want to carry this body to the river where the prophet washed my head and asked me to throw this point backwards before your eyes. In a poem where there is no light 
and there is no word for like grief. I think solemnly of perseverance. The river's persistence march toward uncertainty. I do not want to remember the blade cut, but treat this scars as flowers. I want to be foreign to your name, but remember someone who smiled with a son in their mouth. The prophet knew I'd one day become knew I'd one day dream about an inverted crucifix. The Savior turned out of his resurrection. My grandmother creaming my ear, singing me in her tongue. I want to be in the fish body when the fire catches it. Then God, then call God to see what it took him to turn the fire out, to turn the fire into a prayer room. I want to walk into an intimacy in which my grandmother calls at air, in which her son's wearing a dog's backing or on or owning a morning out of its body. The way I see it, the creator gave memory to damn me. I take my body out of its capsule. I give it forgiveness. I walk the bendings along the Malifal affair, tonguing and crying revival from my stomach. If it's too much to carry, a vast scene of memory, my body begins to revolt by forgetting. First, the number of years that remained when the mortician gathered your body in that white leash, then your good, your good eyes, the way they made you smile as if death was a comfortable place. How peaceful you slept as my aunt threatened to throw herself in a grave. How peaceful you slept as my aunt threatened to throw herself in a grave. Thank you. Whew. I'm trying to... So this next poem is called... I'm trying to look for the next one. Sorry. Okay. I'll be or I'll I just took and is God's undone miracle. Tell me, is there a difference between fire and rot? Is this a love poem about the body set ablaze yet miraculous yet she enough to grow abs? I love the Lord, but my father's tears were the first to in that year. I love the Lord, but my father's tears were the first train that year. Love the cities my mother's my mother covered searching for cure to a trembling body. How my sister folded her nose in her pocket as she claimed a limping body of, of its own dreams. This is a poem about love for the fireplace. An ode to every smile squeezed out of my grandmother's distressed body. This is a poem about thunderclaps on evenings when we ate in silence, inches away from a body counting the hands of seconds. I think I once looked into her face and eased at, God, at God's unfaithfulness. A hand once strong enough to see the country now fails to rise from slumber. A coffin trapped, trapped in a body, now a, a coffin trapped in the body, a mouth twisting a song into a bubble. I love the Lord, but this is not how it should be. Little children should not start the process of mourning by coping. Etching oaks into steel, into steel mouths. My mother wraps moi moi in clear politin bags for dinner and I wash my face again, attempting to unsee God's sixth day error due to parallax. A groan reaching for a truth. One thing is that you can take away magic. Trap a bomb inside the mouth, but, you, but we are cartographers of memory. My grandmother fed my ear mouth with oogie and loved me like church bells on Sunday mornings, asked with mist and solemn prayers. Fed me stories of Ijapa and Yoko, fed parables in Ijebu, and laughed at how little we know of home, one 
afternoon, my brother and I ran the compound singing our biscuits into our, our, into our hungry bellies. Another Saturday, we watched wrestling with our eyes shut as she held in discomfort. Who would know that this body, she cared so much for, would be God's tabernacle for disease, filled hands at God's witches, wishes at Babel. I love the Lord, but this is not how to dethrone an angel. This is not how to collect light from hands that were once headlamps. <clears throat> Thank you. So my grandmother was, and um, she before she died, she had stroke. So I mean, I I'm using this point to, you know, to process the grief and to um, to document the entire experience. Can I say one thing? Okay. I'm gonna. This is gonna have to be our last poem, okay? Okay, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. It is. Oh, cool. My last poem. Thank you. Yeah. The unfaithfulness of ants. The faithfulness of ants. To think I imagined you in the prayer house, purging your body with his tongue. I stand outside watching you all into the sky, sacrilege crested in your body, where an apology looks like a clover leaf, a blade like restitution. There is a road and a flower room, the Lord over in a grave, questioning the dead about dreams rooted in freedom. I gather you flowers and walk inside. I gather you flowers and walk inside. To meet you at this place where a bidden girl is someone's fountain, a tributary of light forming into an old mouth like kiss. Hope is how you hold me, how you read me a poem and chuckle softly like light thunder. I know chaos when I hear it. And I know peace of rivers, but I am identifying both now. The birds sing the morning out of their beaks. The earth turns and turns and turns into a cross. Christ saying it is finished, add you in mind, says to stay here, planted in the faithfulness of ants, bold enough to gather your fear, safe enough to build you a boat. The coming storm is nothing but pulling on trees, nothing but city at night. The coming rain is nothing but a hallowed mouth blessed with speed saying, I love you, I love you, I love you. Thank you. And what a what a good moment to end on, boy. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, uh, that was very beautiful. Bro, thank you very much. Thank you so much for your poems. Oh my days. Okay, so everyone actually has to get Dayo's book or books, I should say. Like those poems are amazing. There's a rhythm in that. I just felt like I felt buoyed along throughout the whole thing. There was one particular line for me that stood out. And I have to say, at what point does silence become surrender? That is a that is a big line, bro. Those are big words. <laughs> anyway thanks dude thank you very much I should also say that Adedeo is joining us through in the midst of the anti-SARS protests in Nigeria like many of you will have seen this maybe uh, uh, on the news um, SARS are the uh, special anti-robbery squad um, who are performing all sorts of brutality and fuckery in Nigeria. And Adedeo is uh, championing, or one of the many champions who are fighting against that. Um, we spoke on Zoom the other day about how SARS is a Nigerian thing, but police brutality and state fuckery is not. And so, yeah. Double appreciation for Adedeo for joining us tonight because I know he's been involved in a lot of the protests going on and like, you know, um, 
to read poems within the context of an ongoing moment like that, you know, uh, on Zoom is a particular thing. So double appreciation. Um, oh shit. Right, next. Next up, uh, we have Sebastian Bronson Body, uh, who is a non binary poet with an interest in work that explores memory and family. With their work, they strive to delve into their own deep history and puzzle out the questions that arise. They are a first year MFA student at the University of Maryland. I think, I, I mean, as an English person, I, I say Maryland, but I think that's incorrect. <laughs> I think, uh, well, anyway, I'll uh, let Sebastian do the rest of that. Um, hey, Sebastian. Also, I should say that like, uh, I met Sebastian in Norwich. There was some sort of open mic situation. I was like, whoa, those are some real good poems. I and then, they, yeah, here we are. So welcome, Sebastian. Thank you. Um, thanks for the introduction. Uh, yeah, I've never done a reading before, as you can probably tell, but um, I'm so happy to be here. and. Zara and Dio are such amazing poets, so I'm honored to read alongside them. Um, yeah, uh, so the first two poems I'm actually going to read are uh, poems that are based upon and written during um, my study abroad in Norwich. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just jump right in. So the first poem is called Bolognese. It's a little untraditional. You ask me to try the sauce full of whole real tomatoes, minced meat, carrots and peppers cut thick, maybe a little too wet, but it smells good. It fills the kitchen, bursts into the hallway, the table sunset dappled, the plastic kettle boiling, steam coming off in waves, miniature storm clouds forming under the cabinets, collapsing and dying into droplets that cling to the fake wood. We are pressed together at the counter, our edges soft like bread. My shoulder pressed into your arm, my hip made your thigh. There's open space that we fill with laughter and olive oil and outcast. In the quiet moments, there's nothing but Andre 3000 apologizing over and over. I look at you a little closer, your square chin, your laugh, Turkish coffee with fresh cream, your huge earlobes, your boyishness, the gleam of your bared teeth contagious, the way you held the onion when you cut it, the curve of your hand around it, your wrist bent at a beautiful angle, my name in your mouth. Um, so I, I wrote that first when I was, I just had a crush on somebody when I was abroad. Um, so I wrote that and I read that, I think uh, when, I, when I read I think the time that Kai saw me, but um, this is about the same person. Um, and I read it, I wrote it a little later. It's called Before the Leaving. We rang in the new year every night, pressed like pickling sardines or lovers at the top of Smoker's Hill, drinking Foster's because it was cheapest and shittiest and we believed in penance. I don't have a problem yet, he told me then, turning the blue can over in his hands, condensation wetting his palms. For the tiramisu he planned for my 21st, he got ladyfingers from Tesco and curdled the cream and drank the coffee liqueur because he was curious. So I spent my 21st cooking myself eggs in a basket in the grayscale kitchen, the unbroken dollops of blood orange yolk losing their shine under the heat. Norwich is farm country and there are dairy cows on every stretch of grass outside city limits, one for every mile I traveled to see the well-worn cobblestones of the city center, the Primark that boasted trendy Sherpa coats for only 18 quid, the BLT with perfect slivers of avocado and honey that coated the roof of my mouth. He left in the middle of the night without saying goodbye, the only proof of him in the ring of wetness from his glass. I leave in the early hours, watching the morning droop in slowly as the, chain, as the train chugs to Charing Cross peering through the window at the cows in our wake, gray blurs on green. Um, 
Yeah, so uh, the next couple poems are kind of newer, um, and then I'll end on some poems that are kind of about growing up and childhood and stuff. Um, yeah, so the next poem is, is pretty new. It's called June 12th, 1963, after Medgar Evers. On the bluest day in paradise, he died. I was passenger side in paradise, Cadillac cruising, sun on the back of my clean sheared neck when he was shot to death in his driveway, youngest of my three brothers. He was a bright blunt man, the lines of his shoulders sloped only in death. The set of his jaw relaxed now. In paradise, the blue sky descended like a blanket. Now the others will go to battle, their weary faces and underbellies exposed on purpose. There is no such thing as black in paradise. And it is the duty of the eldest to walk first into darkness, but it will not be cold. Black bodies become soil in paradise. Black bodies grown green stalks and flower. Um, uh, and then this next one is called um, Anachronism. It's, um, it's kind of long. I'm still working with it, but um, yeah, Anachronism. Yesterday, my phone's hummingbird vibration against my cheek pulled off the skin of sleep. On the line, her breath shallow and thin as reeds between teeth, her words pushed out like whining dogs. I stood watched in the pre-bedroom, dark, the punctured balloon of her chest, my wet chin. The lobby is full of hunched shoulders and fake plants. They call her name and she leaves, the door swallowing her the brand of her wedding ring on my palm. It was a gradual loss, like overboiled water, first the hair, then the dirtied spoons, dollar store ceramic plates splitting into butterfly wings, the empty shake of her hands. I tuck her in and water the plants, heat hot water for tea on the stove, the gas ticking until it lights. The elderly couple next door gave us free clothes and expensive Swedish face wash. There wasn't anything else to give. Last year on my birthday, mom told me again the story about the day I was born, how I punched my fist into the air and screamed, that first breath the victory cry. Twelve, the bike brakes broke, the purple wheels spun air, mom's cool palm pressed the slick aloe flesh to my raw knee, sweetly stinging. Last summer we cut watermelon wedges and made breakfast cocktails and took long drives in her new car a maroon sedan older than me. Sunset came over the Hudson and barely brushed us, parked at the edge of the valley, pointing out the Empire State peeking above the weeping willows. There, she said, guiding my finger, her hand still sticky. There it is. <laughs> um, um, and I'll, I'll be quick on my last two. Um, this one is a, uh, is about growing up in New York City. And then the next one is a sort of abstract growing up. Um, yeah, and- uh, you, don't, you don't need to rush Sebastian. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know, I just feel, I feel, yeah, jittery. Um, You're but, doing uh, great, you're doing real great. Thanks. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't have much else to say about them. Um, uh, thanks for listening. So this one's called Harlem. The sea town grocery with its wilting cabbages like flaps of yellowed skin. The juice bars, green smoothies before they cost $9 in your dignity. The cramped art studio in the basement of a church, closest thing to a castle. They taught me how to draw an eye. The black bookstore that went out of business. My best friend's apartment around the corner which held the forbidden. McDonald's and caffeinated soda. His mother, a short and wide Polish woman who smoked in the house. Sometimes she spoke to herself in Polish, things she wanted to say to her mother who died before she could send for her from the old country. Or so my friend said, some days the apartment was gray and stretched thin as a veil with silence. His father, a serious and tall African man from which country I forget, when he came home from work, he would unbutton his patterned shirt slowly, 
careful. The palms of his rough worker's hands, white undershirts dark against the dark of the kitchen at sundown. We would watch him do it, chewing Fruit Loops quietly and drinking the stained rainbow milk. He beat his wife. I do not remember the details if I'd ever known them. I did not know then we would move to New Jersey so far from the known world it didn't exist. He had a bunk bed, no siblings. One sweaty summer, we sat in the top bunk and watched the first Spider-Man movie on his brand new DVD player. I kissed him there fast, Mary Jane laughing in the rain on the screen behind us, just to see what all the fuss was about. Um, and my, my last one is called Solstice. Um, I don't, yeah, it's just, I'm feeling sort of weird about pandemic and writing poems and, um, but, but grateful still for connection where it's coming um, and happy to see seasons change and, and to be alive. Um, yeah, uh, this one's called Solstice. Spring shoots come late here. We leave before first bloom. Grandma folds soft olive bills into my palm and closes the fingers, strokes my hair and fixes my hat, a red apple slice against grayed grass. We say goodbye to the black ice and the aching. In its place, I am gifted cramping, crumbling, twirling, falling, pollen allergies. At 15, is there a joy greater than talking to boys and pushing your chest out? Their confused boy eyes, what to do with that flatness, that almost concave girl body. My chest has become a, become a beehive. My chest is now the Egyptian pyramids. Few have seen them up close. It is March and the orchids are unfurling themselves. Some color has returned to the ginkgo and to my father's cheeks. For that, I must thank the body. It has given me laughter and drunkenness, these shaking hands. Thank you. <laughs> Man, ah, yes. You did it, dude. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> you did it, man. Ah. So uh, apparently that was Sebastian's first reading. <laughs> um, how how are you how we how are you feeling? Uh good. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that was that, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I'm. I'm just. I'm just happy to share them. It was yeah. It was it was an excellent reading. Like you should read more. We, the world is the world is ready for your poems. Okay. <laughs> Solstice. Um, I'll take you off the thing. Solstice uh, is a big thing in my family as well, and like uh, as soon as I hear the word, I feel happy and excited. So thank you. Um, there was one. You dropped one bar. Well. In one of the earlier poems, you said, my name in your mouth, which I find really powerful, like simple, but amazing. And also, you said a line which is just, he beat his wife. And you said it so, with so much space around it, that, yeah. Poetry has amazing power, and thank you for bringing your words to us this evening. My pleasure. Cool. Okay. Well, finally, we're going to hear from Maria Sledmere, who is editor in chief at Spam Press, a member of A and E Collective an occasional music journalist. Recent publications include Nature Sounds Without Nature Sounds from Sad Press, 
Rainbow Arcadia from Face Press and Infra Structure with Katie Lewis Hood from Broken Sleep, which is an excellent pamphlet. With Rian Williams, she co-edited co -edited the anthology, The Weird Folds, Everyday Poems from the Anthropocene, which is forthcoming from Dostoevsky Wannabe, which I just uh, have seen that the foreword is from Timothy Morton, which is big things. Um, Maria is doing a lot every day, and we're really glad to have her here this evening. Thanks, Kai. Um, it's well, firstly, I'll say I don't do that much every day. I mean, today, I was like trying to, 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 to work and I could hear the neighbors playing electric guitar and I was like, oh. But then I realized it was a Cocteau Twins song because someone started singing this beautiful soprano part and then I just started crying. Um, it's like an average day for me. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for inviting me to read. It's like such a pleasure to read with everyone um, tonight. It's been really amazing to hear you all um, poets that I have not properly read before. So it's like a really nice treat. Um, yeah, and also, just like Kai, someone I've never met, but we've kind of had some stuff out in the same journals this summer. So it's been nice to kind of get to know each other's work that way. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna start with um, a poem from Pain, appropriately, that just came out. Um, it's called Life Stream. A particular sap is in season. At night, I am visited by fish, their tiny bodies pulled from a book. Explaining myself to myself, I would say joy is so easily hallucinated. Couldn't load the page when I typed in river to search. You in your red coat watching the deer. Put ice cubes in the potted tree. Your apartment will smell pine fresh. We liquefy words for goodbye in other languages. I differ in dreams from the eloquence begged. You don't reply. My skin is of love and salt. Connor says you have to go through your feelings. I am rolling my tarry dreams in the car park at the world's bright core. I am loved by mice and rarely men. I melt in drinks. Close your eyes and imagine a place. Oven baked. The sap was hot and thick and needed to sit. Six years ago, we almost commented. I will learn words that mean the length of such quiddity. This will be cut into coasters to settle a former burning, say. Put down your glasses, software. Mark my words, cover us, covers us. All that I have is the currency of song, river run, rush into satures of future. The fish would leap from the water and speak their research. Little bubbles, we look up to smile at the others, start to yelp. Cars are just things in the distance, colour to colour, signing off. Um, now I'm going to read a couple of poems from um, <laughs> um, a new book that just came out with Orange Apple Press, and it's like a kind of ebook. Um, as my mom says, 54 pages for two quid, like um, bargain. Um, yeah, these are like lockdown poems, I guess, from back in spring. Um, first one's called Jolene. Grass is blue, so it couldn't be hers. It had to be blue. When rain fell on the grass, it was blue. On the grass, it was blue. Oh, the grass. I saw soft, lost, wild grass across the sea. It was blue as only blue can be. This green, a song. The grass in a song. A wild grass is bluest. I see when the wild grass bluest. Lossy in memory, the grass so blue. It's wish I could kiss you. Bluest in the grass, now green, it was blue. Like you, like you but your eyes are either. Um, and this is called Laminaria. The familiar dims, hold fast is landscaped to resemble a genuine bodice of leaf. However you see it, my longing is sore. Beautiful afternoons make light of the country. We launch a tacit heart by paste of link. Such streams are released from me boiled as iodine, the conflict of property. Feels nice to search for nutrition together in the endlessness of Cisco. 
my ambient hut, that I had not cut my lungs on the virtual Atlantic, that I had cold water, kelps, a thyroid ambition to overcome distancing. Haptera formed of the medio literal, my liver is a wave exposure. Colors are small now in the hypergrass of this commons we haven't, small dips of capital, the necessary clarity of water, our pale innovation of rainfall, fake is better, back to index. Um, and my last one is a bit longer. Um, it's called Unplugged in New York. I was a boy in the blue of superlative elsewhere, skylit, my ventricles leaking a perfect cumulus to go out for the count of you in the cerulean side of the gym is a London burnish. So easy, they say, a generous calyx melts out where she throws the air effect. I love all that I can see of sometimes living. Another episteme of sentiment catches dollar, electronique, flirtation of sound and blue, blossom show of unblossom touches the architecture. Repeat after me, this heat confects. Let's go, Evie, into the evening. I always wanted a quintillion rhetoric of all we can't learn, brushing you back in the taxi rank, drawing this out for hours, white lines for lines, out for the count. The president says, can we not just inject? Can we not conjecture? I want to send you a concept sketch for putting the opioid back into its flower. All of you send me rainbowed across the quantum marinade. You were drawing as children the invariable lemonade rising as rainbows. The president denies a crisis as he enters the stadium declaring New York is a meadow. My oil is only standard and classical, a weaponry of therapy stops. My address is just repetition and the noun at the end of the line will bounce a polyp of sugar. All of us watch the price for a selvage of apples lowering blood, squeeze into the remix. I wanted it good, like a temperature, so big, when you open me up at the lip, 11,000, and you open me good, when my spleen is just such stuff as the stars are duped on, when you open a star me at the back of the episode, phosphoric acid tendering cigarettes, turn off the lights and listen to Rachel Wallace in a parallel universe, the lindens filling the warehouse sway, a tiny box of matches, vascular, lucid, more innocent times are falling again. Tell me why the wind is ad free and not the rain, I want it, I have to tell Bedlam, I want my body in the flesh of the doping light. None of this applies to you elsewhere, so far away, children on the asphalt, spectral with chalk. My limbs flail into MTV rainbow. I purchase CDs with abandon, nothing delivers. Curate the modernism you want to die in, 1990s, looking the bloom of the silver to scratch like a card. Fin de siècle, etc. Don't go. As I was a boy, almost into the blue and older and older, cascading out of the debut with water lilies singing my name in atrocious ringtones over and over. I think PDF depression for Shanine. I think I will take off my Denimberry heart for this, and this only you know about it the light of extended play. Still it bling for England. I kept my friends electric, kept cleaning my lungs with cinders and leather. The president suggests sunlight in lieu of the broken test, a very nice rumor, out of the blue, a file of poison idiom. If you could, if you had ever heard of the heat and the light, if you could bleach it back to the life you have to lose, a prick, you have to lose the life. It feels so extra. Lucky cloud in my blood is MP3. Maybe she is the air that I breathe, disinfected. To know this, maybe the air that I breathe for us is lighter and lightness. To know this, rainbowing the sand from the ocean's belly, the hollies. I was sorry for the shallow location, the shape in the air, like the upturned smile and to love you. Don't lie. This site has expired under prime subscription, the year I was born about a girl. How young they look before internet, darkest in high definition, the tube of you. I have watched this polishing cutlery. I have watched this glossing the flutes of a careless champagne in the pink, a nuclear whisper. I have watched myself in the grease of your hair. 
What more could I ask? We end this cut and you say you are free and I do and I do, sweet dreams. Not say this is symbol in the lisp between steel, my easy friend, my stainless zoom, and you say you are free. The president at the balustrade drinking a lemonade says, we can only unplug our phones and drink in the sun. The whites and pinks soften our cars, pretense of the infinite. Someone is blonde and killer. I can't believe cocaine is real. I can't believe something Frank says, you can come back and be safer with me. Darling, darling, why must I cry one more time on a Friday? Uncloned and knowing a cool presidential genitalia, out of shit air we fell together, a colossal excess of the winter thorax, a fifth infected, this city is crowned and tested, he drops a glass over the balcony, goldest, we lick up the shards of another agenda. Shiver in the blossomless remnant of April, and I want it to rain here very slowly, so as to extend this only to rainbows of speedway, opening my veins so as to expect all violet to lime, all rhubarb clouds. My girl, my girl, you are such yellow to me in the contact trace as the blindness and the turtleneck as big as the restaurant. I'll fold in the withering light of that hour, polyrhythm, you pull me from entrees slowly, with your pearl of a comb and the knife is a sliver of service furloughed and you cut through the darkest material of living. Sometimes I think I'm inclined to apologize for the universe gossip in coolest policy. Landlords import their portals of radium as above, so a subway. We plug where it hurts. What else should I say? Everyone is, everyone is. What else is dredged of gold and lemonade unknowing? What else I could speak clicking to meet these feelings? When they made me wear blue to sight this solar, as my father said, when you get older, the sun will bless you more. As if this were sanitized, always I go into the lobe of a gentle lyric exception against an alarming capacity, perforate yellow flower, blithe in my finance. All you would know of the color, Pull a secret muscle below my ribs, a secure X, Y. I enter the toll by a line. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maria. Wowzers. Oh, I was in another world there. Uh, like a, uh, um, Henry said he's going to do a thing about gallery view so we can see more than one person at once, but um, I don't know if that's happening. Uh, thank you. God. Wow, that was like into, ah, oh, gosh. Uh, sorry, it's going to take me a minute to get back into the realms of, of reality here. Um, there was one thing, yeah, so obviously I said I love Right, yeah. But when you said conjecture and then sketch for, I was like, oh, <laughs> that's that's lovely. And the whole you created a whole world. Anyway, thank you. Well, well, thank you. All we can do is make worlds, I guess. Yeah. Right. Try. Um, <laughs> Poets. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Well, thanks everybody. That kind of um, that kind of brings brings us to the end of the readings. Uh, don't really have much to add apart from I hope everybody enjoyed it, and um, we'll be back with some equally. Um, exciting people and poems uh, that's on the 10th of December Henry will uh, update you a little bit about the, the, that kind of stuff and I'll pass over to him now but thanks for coming and yeah celebrate everybody that was so sick Google everyone make sure you get to know their work uh, etc There we go. Um, thank you, Kai, for that. Thank you for handing back.
Um, I should be coming back through now. Um, as Kai said, it's going to round up uh, quickly. Oh, Kai's still on. Let's stop the video. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, I've just uh, I'm just posting everyone's uh, link straight into the stream chat now, just because there's a lot of wonderful things mentioned. And okay, it's, it's posted them all together. That's not very helpful. Sorry. Um, let's do it one at a time. A lot of things were mentioned, and I think it'd be, I think a lot of people want to follow up on those. So just in the order that they were done, they'll go into the YouTube chat, and then you can um, follow up from there. Also, at the start, I mentioned that I would post the link to uh, join the Assembly House mailing list in the YouTube chat, and I didn't do that. Um, so I will put that in there as well, not to bombard you. Um, I'm sure it'll be hard for me to put anything in the way of quite the stream of thank yous and appreciation that is coming in on the YouTube chat tonight. I'll let all the poets uh, themselves go back and read through that as there's some wonderful things mentioned. Um, so thanks again to everyone involved with tonight um, and to Kai for organising, to Fatima, to Sebastian, Maria and Adide. Um, Next up on Assembly Online, in two weeks, we have Jess Fernie and Olivia Hanes on October the 29th talking about the Archive of Destruction, which is a project that Jess was hoping to launch this year but has not been able to. Um, and Olivia Hanes will be joining her to discuss her project Brussels, Anti-Demolition Campaign, 2012-13. Um, after that, in November, we have Of and By with uh, Jonathan P. Watts hosting. The guest for that will be Matt Anis. The uh, talk will be, or the reading will be Far Out, The Roots and Rise of Rave Culture in East Anglia. Then on November 26th, we have Original Projects based in Great Yarmouth. Um, yet to announce uh, quite what they're doing, but that will be on all the channels when it is. Um, do you find us on Twitter or Instagram or join the mailing list? Um, thanks again for everyone who's logged in tonight. And um, I, there should be a next um, international poetry reading in December, as Kai mentioned. Um, and we should have the confirmation from that um, in the next few days. So thank you all. I hope to see you at the next one. Um, thank you. Stay well. Stay warm. First one I'm actually wearing a jumper for. Um, it's definitely.